All right, so this is a pants review for uh, part two of the renal system. So let's go into uh, starting with acute kidney injury, uh, pre-renal. So the main thing you need to know about pre-renal is that there's nothing wrong with the kidney. Uh, the kidney's fine, but you have decreased renal perfusion. Kidney's doing fine. The person is um, volume depleted, so they're hypovolemic. They're dehydrated. Um, so hypovolemia is the most common cause. Um, so just think of reasons the person may be volume depleted, so whether it's diuretics, diarrhea, vomiting. Um, that's the key you need to see in this vignette. This person is going to be volume depleted for whatever reason, and they're hypovolemic, and their kidneys aren't getting enough fluid, basically. Um, so some other causes, um, it could be NSAIDs which will cause afferent arterial constriction, and then ACE inhibitors, which will cause efferent arterial dilation. Um, this is something that I always got mixed up in school, and I came up with a way to remember it um, so I didn't forget because I, there used to be NSAIDs and ACE inhibitors, and I couldn't remember which one affected the afferent, which one affected the efferent, was it dilation? So this is a way I came up to remember that. So ACE inhibitors um, versus NSAIDs. NSAIDs does not have an E in it where ACE inhibitors does. So when I see ACE inhibitors, I think efferent expansion or dilation because it dilates the efferent. And then with NSAIDs, um, I take the S and the A there and I think of a shrinking or vasoconstriction afferent. So this is the way I uh, remembered it. And that's something that I never forget. So if somebody's taking ACE inhibitors, you think that uh, there may be a pre-renal cause and it's because the efferent expansion, or if they're taking too many NSAIDs, um, you think of a shrinking or vasoconstriction afferent. Um, so that's a good way to remember that. As far as diagnosing it, um, the main thing, especially in, I just remember from school and so many of the exams and things, it was always about the BUN creatinine ratio. And with, uh, with pre-renal, the BUN creatinine ratio is over 20 to one. That's really important. If you're not gonna remember anything else, just remember that because that is one of the keys to diagnosing a pre-renal uh, acute kidney injury. Um, also look for fractional excretion of sodium less than 1%. And basically the urine's just gonna be concentrated because there's not a lot of fluid, it's not dilute um, because the person is again, volume depleted. Um, as far as treatment, you're basically just repleting their volume. You're gonna give them IV fluids and the key is that they're gonna respond very quickly. Their creatinine's gonna go back to normal, they're gonna get back to normal clinically, um, and that's and that's the key with this one versus some of the other ones we'll talk about later, like intrinsic. Um, the person's gonna do very well as soon as you give them IV fluids. So as far as post-renal, I'm gonna go over the, the two easy ones first because pre-renal and post-renal are both, both pretty straightforward, whereas intrinsic, there's a lot more going on, um, different causes. So post-renal, um, if in pre-renal you're thinking, um, hypovolemia, post-renal, you need to think of an obstruction somewhere. So pre-renal, think volume depleted, uh, post-renal, think some sort of obstruction. Um, so it could be a kidney stone, it could be a tumor, it could be BPH, uh, they could have prostate cancer, something that's that's stopping the flow of urine from the kidneys to the bladder, um, and it's backing up. So just think of post-renal uh, azotemia, make sure you're thinking of some sort of obstruction somewhere. Um, and that could definitely be in the vignette. A patient with kidney stones is now having different types of symptoms, um, you know, and you want to think of post-renal. So as far as diagnosing, it's an ultrasound because you're looking for signs of obstruction. So you're going to be, you know, doing an ultrasound of the bladder, the ureters, just to kind of get an idea of where the obstruction is. Um, and then as far as treatment, it's just removing the obstruction. Again, this is pretty straightforward. These first two are, there's not much to them. Um, you're removing the obstruction, whether it's lithotripsy, urinary stent, um, whatever it is, just to make sure that you remove that obstruction and get things going again. So those are the two easy ones as far as the acute kidney injury. Um, as far as intrarenal and intrinsic, there's a little bit more to it. There's different causes. Um, so this is the one that's a little bit more involved and I'll give you some ways to remember uh, different things with this. So the first type of um, intrinsic renal failure is acute interstitial nephritis. So with acute interstitial nephritis, as soon as you see that, think of there was some medication that they took that's causing this. That's 70% of the cases. So if you're going to have a vignette, you're going to have this on an exam. It's most likely going to be caused from some kind of medication. Again, most exams that you're going to see, they want you to know the most common things. They don't want you to know that 5% of times it's from some obscure thing like an autoimmune process, which this can also be from, but not common at all. Um, they want you to know the, you know, the things that you're going to see the most. So um, as far as acute interstitial nephritis, think of drugs. 70% of the time it's going to be from 
some sort of medication. And as far as the most common medication to cause this, it's going to be NSAIDs. So acute interstitial nephritis, your mind should go to NSAIDs. It should go to medications, but then thinking NSAIDs first. Um, some other drugs, of course, penicillin, sulfa, rifampin as well, but think NSAIDs really. And how do you remember acute interstitial nephritis, NSAIDs? So the way I remembered it, acute interstitial nephritis, AIN, always involving NSAIDs. And that's a really nice way to remember it. Again, this is something I never forgot. Um, and it helps a lot because a lot of times in the vignette, it will be somebody who took too many NSAIDs, whatever it was, and, and that's actually the cause of the intrinsic renal failure. So if you remember AIN, acute interstitial nephritis, remember always involving NSAIDs, um, and you won't forget that way. Um, we can also, like I said, so these are the more rare causes, probably not going to see this on the exam. Um, can also be caused from infection, autoimmune processes. But again, think of drugs, think of NSAIDs. So the patient is going to present like any other allergic reaction. Um, so they can have fever, eosinophilia, rash. And then as far as diagnosis, um, one of the main things you're going to see with this that you should really think of um, when you're thinking of this diagnosis is white blood cell casts in the urinalysis. That's really important. And the way I remember this, again, go back to the same thing, acute interstitial nephritis, AIN think always involving neutrophils or, you know, one of the most common types of white blood cells. And then you should think of white blood cell casts. So that's how I remember that. Um, and as far as treatment, you just want to remove the offending agent. So if they're taking an NSAID or, you know, you want to make sure you stop them. If it's a, you know, they're on an antibiotic, penicillin, discontinue that. But the main, the key here is to discontinue, uh, remove that offending agent. And those are the two things to remember. If just remember NSAIDs and white blood cell casts, that AIN, and you'll probably be able to get this on the vignette. Um, so the next one, acute tubular necrosis. This is actually the most common type of intrinsic uh, kidney injury. The majority of the cases are um, some sort of ATN, and it can be caused from ischemia. So this can actually be um, the patient presented with a pre-renal cause of acute kidney injury and actually turned into acute tubular necrosis. So pre-renal can actually be one of the causes of uh, acute tubular necrosis. Um, so prolonged pre-renal azotemia. Another big one, and this is the one that I remember seeing in school and everything, was uh, nephrotoxic agents. So contrast dye, like if they're having a CAT scan, aminoglycosides is another big one. Um, and diagnosis, this is huge. Um, this will most likely be in the question, um, granular or muddy brown casts in your analysis. Um, that's, a, that's a key to acute tubular necrosis, and it's very important. So I figured out a weird way to remember it, and hopefully this helps you because it helped me. Um, what I think of is I think of somebody mudding or mudding it like or tubing in mud. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do this before, but uh, basically being like pulled by an ATV and uh, they're in an inner tube being pulled in the mud. So I think acute tubular necrosis, like a tubing. And then I think of muddy brown casts and I think of mud tubing and I just have this picture in my head and I never forgot as soon as I see acute tubular necrosis, I just think of somebody like tubing in mud. Um, hopefully that helps you. I know it's an odd kind of way to remember it, but I've never forgotten that. And I always think of muddy brown casts uh, or granular in the urinalysis. Uh, as far as treatment, again, if it's, uh, if it's a nephrotoxic agent, contrast diaminoglycosides, remove the offending agent, and then IV fluids is also first line in treatment. Uh, moving on, just as, just as kind of a comparison of pre-renal versus ATN, I feel like this is important because uh, you want to differentiate when you have a question on this. <clears throat> and when you're looking at pre-renal, again, this is kind of a review of what we already went over. So pre-renal, um, it's going to have decreased urinary sodium, uh, less than 20. The kidneys are working fine. They're still able to retain sodium. Um, the nephrons, everything is functioning normally, so there's no issue with that. Whereas acute tubular necrosis, you're going to have increased urinary sodium. The, the kidneys don't have the ability to retain them anymore. You're having problems with the nephrons. The kidney's failing, so you're actually going to see a larger amount of increased urinary sodium um, over 40. Um, that's one of the important things to remember. Um, as far as pre-renal, the urinalysis is fine. There's no issues with that because, again, the kidneys are working fine. The only thing you might see is because they're volume depleted, you might see the uh, increased specific gravity in the urinalysis. But overall, there's nothing wrong in the actual urinalysis itself or as an ATN. Remember, granular or muddy brown casts in the urinalysis. And um, that's, again, really important. And remember the way I told you to remember that. That's something that you'll see. Uh, most likely in the question. So as far as pre-renal in, in treatment, 
um, when you give somebody with pre-renal IV fluids, they're going to show a huge improvement. Creatinine is going to normalize, um, whereas ATN, it's not going to have much of an effect. Uh, the patient's condition or creatinine level will pretty much stay the same. And then the, the biggest one of all of these, if you're going to remember anything, remember that BUN to creatinine ratio. Pre-renal always is going to be over 20 to 1, whereas in ATN, you're going to see something closer to like 10 to 15. But remember, pre-renal is always over 20 to 1. Um, so as far as your analysis findings, I feel like these are important because there's different things you're going to see in the urinalysis. And again, a lot of this is review stuff we already went over in either this video or the previous one, but I feel like it's important to remember these and kind of just go over them again, because these are something you might see in the vignette and it might be key for you to be able to figure out, um, what diagnosis they're talking about. Um, so again, acute uh, glomerulonephritis or vasculitis, you're going to see red blood cell casts. Um, AIN or pyelonephritis, white blood cell, remember AIN, always involving neutrophils, that's your white blood cell cast. Um, nephrotic syndrome, remember this was what we went over in the first video. Nephrotic, think of that O like a big fat belly, or O as in oval fat bodies or fatty casts. And then end stage renal disease is waxy casts. And this is the way I remember this was I just think of end stage or death, the last stages, and then I just think of like a a wax museum or when they're preparing you for you know the funeral the, the bodies always kind of look like they're kind of glossed over or waxy um probably not the best way to remember it, but again it's worked for me and it's something that i haven't forgotten um so that's just another quick review of these because this is important for you to remember you'll likely see this in the question um and then another one that's not really a high yield thing but i figure we would go over it because it is on the uh, on the blueprint horseshoe kidney it's all pretty straightforward. It's a fusion normally at the lower poles of each kidney. Um, it can be associated with other urologic abnormalities. Most common is the uridopelvic junction obstruction. And it's also associated with Turner syndrome, which is important to remember. And the way I remember that is basically the kidneys make a little U-turn here at the bottom where they connect. So U-turn, and then that makes me think of Turner. Um, so that's how I remembered it's associated with Turner syndrome. Because of the urinary stasis, the stagnant urine, you have an increased risk of pyelonephritis, also kidney stones, so the patient may present with that. Um, then there's also an increased risk of malignancies, renal cell carcinoma being the most common. Most patients are asymptomatic. Uh, diagnosis is going to be CT urography. It's going to be your best initial test, and the treatment is basically just dependent on what they're presenting with. If they have a UTI or pylo, of course, you're going to give them antibiotics. Kidney stones, you're going to treat that as well, whether it's lithotripsy or um, whatever the case is. But most cases don't really actually require any treatment, and most patients do okay with this diagnosis. So polycystic kidney disease, this is one you'll probably see. I feel like it's a more high-yield um, topic from the blueprint. Um, it's an autosomal dominant disorder. Um, the cysts, obviously, you're going to see in the kidneys. But if they're not in the kidneys, the most common organ besides the kidney that you'll see them in is um, actually the liver. So that's something important to know. Patients may present with abdominal and flank pain um, because of the cysts on the kidneys. And then as far as extra renal manifestations, and this is really important because I feel like for some reason, I always remember seeing this in school. This always seemed to come up, whether it was on exams or otherwise. Um, the patients are actually at an increased risk of cerebral aneurysms or berry aneurysms. Also, mitral valve prolapse um, can also um, come from polycystic kidney disease. And these are just those weird things that they like to ask um, that I feel is important that you know. And the way that I remember this is I think of a bird, I think of a parrot, and he's hitting this guy on the head, which is causing an aneurysm, obviously. <laughs> And um, then I think of parrots named Polly, like polycystic kidney disease, are the most violent pets. So mitral valve prolapse. So I think of a parrot hitting a guy on the head, giving him an aneurysm. And then I think of parrots named Polly are the most violent pets. So mitral valve prolapse. This is how I remember it. Hopefully that helps you. Um, and that's uh, how I've remembered it over the years. Um, so on physical exam, you're going to have, uh, you may see a palpable flank mass. Uh, the patient may be hypertensive because of the cysts on the kidneys. And then diagnosis, renal ultrasound is the most common test, the most popular test. Um, and as far as treatment, nothing really specific. Increased fluid intake, ACEs and ARBs um, can treat the hypertension. It also helps um, prevent degradation of the kidneys. Um, and that's something that's um, important for, for, this, for this disease.